In this tutorial, I'm going to show the advanced keyframing within the Tracker dialog. So as you saw in the past tutorial, we added this Clean the Ice title to the Zamboni tracking around the ice. We also added a tracker to the net, but I haven't added a title there yet. I want to use the advanced uh, information within the Tracker dialog to be able to slant and distort the title. So let's start by putting a title into the title track. Double click on the title and then add the word game. I want to change the title a little bit here. Add some different color to it. And let's go in here and make it a little bit transparent. Let's go down here and add some transparency. Okay, so you can see now the, the title is a little bit transparent over the net. Now I'm going to go in and add a tracker to that title. So I right click on the title itself, click match motion, and then go in and find where I am. So here I have this tracker, which is the title tracker. Right here, tracker 2 is my title tracker. You can see there it's positioned. If I scrub through here, it will stay with the net at some point right there. Now here is where I want to be able to scale this this uh, title to be able to uh, have it lay on the ice. So this is about the point here. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add a keyframe. So let's add a keyframe here. And what I want to do is distort this. So first thing I want to do in the distortion is make it bigger. And then I want to distort it by using this little dialog down here. You can see there's four green points and that is a distortion point. So let me just lay this text down a bit. And this will take you some time to refine. Get it exactly the way you like it. So here I have it laying on the ice. And this could be the logo, this could be a graphic, it could be video if you like. So now as I scrub through here, you'll notice now that the title of the game is laid on the ice. You'll notice here that it's going back to the original position on screen down in here. So I'd like to be able to maintain that same aspect and same distortion on the last keyframe. So what I do is I go to the keyframe that I created, right click on it, and then say copy and paste all. So now every keyframe is the same, and there's that title sitting right there. Now you'll notice as I'm scrubbing through here, some of the parameters are changing. So for instance in here you can see the size, the size is set for 37. If I go in here and change the size on this keyframe, you'll notice that it's changing as well down in here. You can see there's 33. And as I move through it, it will tween between my next keyframe. So there's a 30 size 37. So every time you put something to a keyframe, be it a shadow or rotation or, or whatever, what will happen is, is that is attached to that single keyframe and it will tween to the next frame unless you copy the same keyframe over or make a new keyframe with the same attributes. So in this case here, what I want to do is you'll notice that as I move through here, the game is a little bit too big. So what I'll do is on the last keyframe, I'm going to resize it a bit so it's a little bit smaller. So it looks like it's moving away with the ice. And then you start getting a pretty good effect. There's a zoom in, and as the video is zooming out, you can see the text is getting smaller, as you'd expect in a zoom. Once you've done that, then you can go in here and say OK. So now I have the game text lying on the ice. And as I move through here, I want it to start. You know, notice it's going with the other tracker until that new tracker starts. So what I want to do is just find that position where it starts. Click on the title and then drag the endpoint to where that track is. So here you'll see there's the game and it gets smaller as the camera zooms back. Let's go back into the keyframing. Click on the clip, right click, and then say match motion. You'll notice as I scrub through the tracker here that there's a number of criteria below where you can change. So for instance on this one, let me go to this this uh, keyframe here. Let's change the opacity of that graphic down quite a bit. 
So it's just just a, a hint of on the being on the ice. Then I'm going to go to the last one. Notice here it's 35 percent. Let me go to the last keyframe and just manually type in 35. So now both keyframes have the same degree of transparency. Very very subtle title that's laying on the ice. The next thing you can do is you can keyframe shadow. In this case that doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, it's lying flat on the ice. You can add a border. You can mirror if you like. So let me just go back to that keyframe that I was at. I can either scrub back to it or I can jump back and forth in the keyframes. So let me just go here and let me go and mirror it. You can see there's a mirror on the ice. And it mirrors, you'll notice, because we distorted it, it mirrors at the angle. So I've distorted it in that angle, so it's going to mirror and put it at this angle as well. You can go in here and you can change the distance of the mirror if you like, how far this this piece mirrors away. You can also go in here and have it fade out, so it have kind of an edge fade on the mirror, so it's very subtle. This may be mirroring on the glass. Once you're satisfied with that, you just say OK. Now let me just go here and play this. Now I have two titles, one following the Zamboni, and one following the game. So there you have it. Very, very simple title to be able to play a title to follow a one object where another title follows another object.